Narcissists always ruin holidays. Did yours? My name is Tracy Malone. I'm the founder of NarcissistAbuseSupport.com. And today I want to talk to those survivors of narcissistic abuse who may be struggling with their first holiday alone, or even the first holiday with their kids without the other parent. And I want to give you a tip that comes from my book that is um, how to prevent post-divorce holiday abuse with your ex and your children. So we'll talk about that in a little while. If you like this video, please subscribe, please like it, leave me a comment and tell me how your narcissist has um, ruined your holidays or questions that you may have, and I'll be happy to go in there and get to them. Um, you know, the holiday culture of the big family dinner, happy people, cookies, trees, and presents, it puts pressure on all of us, right? But to the narcissist, there's no greater time to um, like be mean and make you feel terrible because they know how important it is. Doesn't matter if it's the Christmas holiday, doesn't matter if it's it's Valentine's Day, they, they always go after you and um, they know that it's important. And what better for you to, the gift that keeps on giving, if they've ruined every one of your Christmases, when that calendar comes back, you're always going to remember this time. Let's hope we can get that out of our mind. And when we build our new life, we don't even think about them anymore. Remember, negative attention is still attention to a narcissist. Um, the list of things that they do is endless. And you can see thousands of videos. I probably got five every year I make a holiday video. But today I wanted to focus on you your journey, your pain, and look at some strategies to help you get through this season. Everything on narcissistic abuse is on a spectrum. So some people are like, well, mine was never like that, or mine ruined it this way, and mine ruined it that way. I, I want you to understand that, again, spectrum, we'll talk about that. Some people are going to be alone. Some people are going to have their kids. There's so many different things and variables that can happen in here, but you're still going to experience a little bit of trauma as you deal with these things. So, um, you know, again, narcissists, everything's got to be about them, and they don't like to share the spotlight, even with their kids. So all the kids opening presents, it's like, how come no one's paying attention to me, Right. So the first year of first, um, if we have, are divorcing or breaking up after a long relationship, the, we must get through the first year of firsts. I have a whole chapter on this in my book. It, every, every calendar season, every this, every anniversary, every this, we're going to have to make it through. And that includes the holiday, right? Some of you are going to have a holiday this holiday season in 2021 that this may be the first time you don't have your children. This may be the time then you're sitting alone in some apartment and you're not in the house that you've been in for 20 years. The other part of the spectrum is where people um, feel like it's a win. You got the kids this year, yay. And it is a win, do not discredit that. But I want you to understand the challenges that may come along with that. Because if you have your, your kids, they may struggle with sadness or lack of holiday joy, and you're going to have to pick up the pieces of their emotional wounds. Again, if this is traumatizing to you that you're not the family unit, the Brady Bunch family and the you know Hallmark Christmas table with all the trimmings on it, um, your children are going to feel that as well. They're going to um, like really just again they're going back to school what did you do oh my goodness you know it's traumatizing if your ex is um not dangerous <laughs> um and and it is allowed in your divorce decree try to encourage the children to reach out and talk to the other parents it may bring them a little bit of like peace and may make your job a little bit easier um children do experience abandonment wounds. So again, if this is the first time, this first season without the traditional family unit, um, it's crucial for their resilience to honor their sadness and don't be like, put on a happy face, but actually create different routines, create new traditions for your family. That's important um, because the old traditions, if you did it with them, all of a sudden they're going to be like, but I miss mommy or I miss daddy, right? Try to do this for your children. It's so important. Um, if you are, um, 
spending the holidays alone, right? It's really helpful. And, and people told me this when I was going through my divorce and I was like, eeks. Um, it's helpful to make plans. Um, and if someone invites you, it's awkward to be invited to someone's house for a family celebration like Christmas. Um, I did it for a few years after my divorce. And while it was like nice of them to do it, it made me feel sad. Um, and it made me feel lonelier as I watched all the happy couples and, you know, all the stuff going on and going, will I ever have that? Oh, no. Um, I did have to sit with the reality of the broken expectations. And you will too, right? I thought my life would be this way. And here I am alone or at my next door neighbor's house. It's weird. Your strategy is to get out. First of all, make that plan. Even if it's weird and awkward to go to the neighbor's house, make the plan. Get yourself out. It's only a few hours. You can wallow the rest of the day. You can be sad. But if you get out, you're just sort of not making it a complete day of, of mourning, if you would. Go for a walk. Go for a movie. Um, and, and it's kind of helpful, too, to pretend that it's just another day. Um, and so just get out. It will make the time go faster. And then you can get back later. Um, if you're sitting alone, it opens you up to rumination. The rumination away, the things that should have been or the ways that they always were and they're not. And then fear creeps in, it always creeps into that rumination script that will I ever be happy again? Will I ever have another Christmas, right? If you're struggling with rumination, I'm going to put a link down below. If I can figure out how to do it up there, I will. Um, but if you're struggling with rumination, I made an amazing video with Brie Bonchet, the founder of World Narcissist Abuse Awareness Day on rumination just a few weeks ago. So I think it would really help. Now, if you're going through your divorce and you haven't actually finalized the parenting plan or the divorce decree, I have an, a nugget of a warning. Um, holiday schedules are often like a cookie cutter. You get them this Christmas, I get them next Christmas, then we do that till the kids are 18 and they're out of the system, right? Um, that's what the normal divorce decrees come. That's what lawyers go. We need this. We're going to do it. And it seems like, okay, that's fair. They're going to get them. We're going to get them fine. Right. Um, but it's not not proof. And um, before you look at what you're going to put in there, you have to come up with specific times. Narcissists live in the gray area, black and white in some thinking, but when it's gray, they see, well, you didn't say when Christmas starts, right? In my book, Divorcing Your Narcissist, You Can't Make This Shit Up, I have this story about this woman who um, had her husband get the, the children for that first Christmas. And it said, you Christmas me next year, right? But if most of you know, that's often a holiday vacation. Winter break is, is comes after the Christmas. So this man took the children on Christmas Eve and refused to bring them back, refused to answer her calls. The police were called. She couldn't do anything. They were like, well, it doesn't say when he has to bring them back in the divorce decree. So please, if you are in a position where you are making these decisions for your future, in your divorce or parenting plan, right? Get my book and learn how to navigate these things. Like a simple thing of Christmas Eve, Christmas starts on nine o'clock on this day and ends by six o'clock this day. Um, so put that all together. It's going to help you. Um, if you are having to spend time with your narcissist, um, it's important for you to protect yourself and your children. This could also be where you're going to a narcissistic family member's house, like a mother or even in-laws, right? And they always need the attention on them. And so they start arguments before you get there. And um, if you're arriving at the narcissist's house, um, they may push your, your triggers and get an emotional response like that makes you angry. Like, there they go again. Oh no, they're doing it again. And, you know, when you get angry, they win because now they can tell everyone you are Chris, you are crazy. Remember Christmas? Remember what she did? Um, okay. The other spectrum is that if you're with a narcissist, that they just completely ignore you. And while this certainly hurts, it's better than the negative attacks. And again, um, take it as you have to protect yourself. Um, there's also protected contact. If you're going to that in-law's house or your mother's house, who's the narcissist, 
the thing about protective contact, that means that, um, that if you're there with a spouse, they never leave your side. They never let the narc be alone with you. You could do that with your children, depending on how old they are. Um, but just keep them away from you. And then they can't use things against you, right? Um, tell them nothing about yourself. Don't give them anything. And learn to set really strong boundaries. If you're going to that mother-in-law's house, make sure your spouse is on board with what's okay. You know, this is not, I'm not going to tolerate this, this, and this. And and what is the penalty? What are we going to tell your mother if she does A, B, and C? You have to be on the same page so that they can see it coming. Okay, mom's crossed us twice now. We've only been here for 10 minutes. Can't do anything right. What's your level? Have a plan to get out and get out safely. Um, be prepared with this exit strategy and remember to enforce your boundaries. If you say a consequence and you don't follow through, um, the abuse usually like amplifies. They know that your boundaries don't mean anything. So it's a hard time of year. I get it. And I just encourage you to take these precautions and don't isolate yourself. Um, try to get out there and do something and you'll make it through. It is just another day and let's get through this together. So thank you all and happy holidays.